Good day, mate, and welcome to a feature history special episode. Today is a good day, for it is Australia Day, a day where every true blue Aussie legend goes out and enjoys a snag on the barbie. But instead, you're sat here watching this video, you pathetic little worm. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Well, you can tell yourself that. Moving on, anyways, for this special day, I have prepared the long requested video of the Great Emu War. Because you think you're absolutely hilarious, don't you? Write in your comment, do the Emu War. Well, you're not, right? It's disrespectful. But I am a whore for positive praise, so I'm doing it anyway. Let's cut the crap and not beat around the bush any longer. <laughs> Get a bush like the outback. Yeah, alright. Let's just delve straight into this. The start of our story begins with the end of the Great War. Australian veterans returned to their home girt by sea and many decided to take up farming in Western Australia on the land they had been rewarded with for their services. Farming though, isn't that easy, especially when a Great Depression happens. In 1929, farmers were instructed to increase their wheat production and the government promised to subsidise these farmers. Little problem. Subsidies didn't, you know, actually happen? The wheat market would only become worse and worse, and by October 1932, the farmers were on the brink of protest. Then they came. Emus numbering in the tens of thousands stormed the farms of the Campion district. You see, these little hellspawn migrate after their breeding season and typically head to the coast. Those farms, though, were closer to their breeding grounds and made themselves very attractive with dams and cultivated grounds. The emus would consume and spoil the crops. On top of this, they'd also leave large gaps and fences for their little rabbit allies to enter the farming grounds and cause an even bigger mess. The farmers in places such as Chandler and Walgulan were terrorised, and their farms threatened with imminent destruction at the hands, or rather wings, of the emus. The farmers' pleas for help would be heard when a committee of ex-soldiers approached the Minister of Defence, Sir George Pearce, with an idea. They commented on the effectiveness of machine guns when used against them in campaigns such as Gallipoli, and how it would be great that instead of getting those shot at them, to instead use it as a form of advanced pest control. Pearce loved this idea, though he wanted to add some stipulations. If they were going to use military equipment, he wanted active military to handle them. The farmers would also flip the bill and open their homes to the military for the length of the operation. The plan was set. The government could win back the hearts and mind of the discontent farmers by unloading some thousand odd bullets into hordes of emus. As Pierce said, it would make for some great target practice. Major Meredith of the Royal Australian Artillery Regiment was to oversee the operation. Though unfortunately, despite him being of the Artillery Regiment, they were not going to bomb these critters back to the hell they came from. Akin to the scene in Inglorious Bastards, he would state, Each and every man under my command owes me a hundred emu skins, and I want my skins, and my men will get me a hundred emu skins from the bodies of a hundred dead emus, or you will die trying. I'm paraphrasing, of course, he just wanted some feathers for some hats. Equipped with two Lewis guns, the troops would deploy to the district on October 1932. They were going to war. But then it rained, so they went inside and had some biscuits. But on November 2nd, they were going to war. When they got to the area, they were a bit lost. Like a school group that had just gotten off a bus, they had no idea what to do. They decided they'd have the locals help them herd the emus into an ambush, where at that point, they'd release the full firepower of the Lewis guns into the swarms of emus and be done in time for dinner. It turns out though, emus are not domesticated animals and don't take very well to being herded. They dispersed and pissed off, basically. One gunner decided he'd try his luck anyway and opened fire to only find out that emus are actually reincarnated ninjas. They dodged every shot he could fire at them. When asked how many he killed, he responded with a number of birds. You know, a quantifiable amount of them. On November 4th, they launched the Operation Emu Execution. Not the real name, of course, on field it was probably called, Can We Just Get The Fuckers Already? They'd set up near a dam that they knew would have 1,000 emus heading towards it. Like a scene straight from Iwo Jima, they'd wait until the emus were in close proximity until they sprung the trap and released fire. The plan was so good. Too good. And someone had forgotten to clean the gun and it jammed after only 12 birds were downed. The rest run away. Meredith decided they'd set up south where the birds were reportedly tamer. Turns out a tame emu is still an absolute monster. At one point they got so desperate that they decided to place a gun on a truck and chase the herds while mowing them down. They would craft their own personal mechanised war machine. This is a 1930s standard truck though, so it was slow as shit and rock like crazy off-road. The gunner wouldn't even be able to shoot the ground straight. After six days of what would be colloquially referred to as a pain in the ass, Meredith decided to say fuck it and go home. He was happy to report though they hadn't lost anyone. The military would return again in future and see some more success, but still barely leaving a dent in the emu population. Population. After expending far too much ammunition, they decided this was about as effective as attempting to smash a brick wall with your knackers. They'd leave once again. 
The farmers would continue to ring up the government again and again, only to be turned down again and again. The government though would finally wise up and decided that veterans probably actually do know how guns work, and so let them go crazy. Using a bounty system where emus were most wanted, they would be able to eliminate 57,000 of them over a six month period. So while some reparations had been paid in the end, we couldn't possibly have forgotten about it. By the time news reached the Poms, a bunch of moral busybodies decided this coal was an extermination of the rare emu. We call these people wankers. The war has also developed a legacy online, where it is common practice for dickheads to not shut up about it when they find out you're Australian. At the end of the day though, we must always remember this war. It is our duty to never forget its importance in Australian history, society, culture, and legend. God of our fathers known of old, Lord of our far-flung battle line, beneath whose awful hand we hold, dominion over palm and pine, Lord God of hosts be with us yet, lest we forget lest we forget. I nearly forgot to record this outro, but I'm doing it now, so that's uh, that's good, like usual. Uh, thanks to my patrons, you're all pretty cush. Personal mentions go to Zedfa, Robido, and also Anal Scroll. <laughs> the next usual episode should be coming out early next month, so look out for that. Um, goodbye. Kisses. Mwah.